Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over the best Nintendo 64 emulator on PC. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, historically the N64 has been a pretty tough system to emulate, but fortunately on PC we do have a couple of very good options. They're both based on Mupin 64 Plus, so I'm going to go over my favorite RetroArch core as well as the standalone program. First up, RetroArch isn't the easiest program to use, but I do have a few tutorial videos and I'll link one in the description below. If you already have RetroArch up and running, go to Load Core, go to Download a Core, and scroll down to Nintendo 64. From here, there are two different cores available. We have Mupin 64 Plus Dash Next and Parallel N64. I wholeheartedly recommend Mupin 64 Plus Dash Next. I find it to be an excellent core, it's pretty accurate, and it's also very compatible. Once you've downloaded your core, booted up your game, and everything is up and running, press the F1 button, and this brings up your quick menu. From here, scroll down to where it says Options and open up this menu. Once you're here, scroll down to where it says 4x3 Resolution. You can use this setting to boost up the resolution in your game. So just go on ahead and click on it, and you can boost this up to 4K if you want. Now scroll down to where it says Bilinear Filtering Mode and change this from Standard to 3 point. This just helps your textures load correctly and look proper. Now for these next options, feel free to play around with them and see what works for you. Different PCs handle them differently and people prefer different things. For example, the MSAA level here, you can crank up to 16 times if you want, and also if you have a powerful PC. But if you don't, you can put it at 2, 4, or 8, or leave it at 0. For this video, I'll just set it at 8. FXAA is either 0 or 1, so I'm just going to set it to 1. And if you scroll down even more, you can change texture filtering and texture enhancements. Now these are personal preference, for example a smooth filter or a sharp filter. I'm just going to keep it set at none. And you can go to texture enhancement here and change it up as well. Feel free to experiment and see what works for you. Now those are just the basics for RetroArch. There are a lot of options in this core that you can tinker around with. Feel free to tinker around and have some fun with it. Now let's move on to the standalone emulator. The standalone program I recommend is called M64P. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and it works incredibly well. I'll leave a link to this website in the description below. Once you are here, you can pick it up for whatever system you're using. It's available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. For this video, I'll be using it on Windows, so I'm going to go on ahead here and click the Windows64.zip and download it. The total file size here is 36.2 megabytes. When it finishes downloading, go on ahead and extract it into its own folder, and then from here, click on Mupin64 Plus GUI. This is your emulator. When this opens up, the very first thing we want to do is configure our controller. So to do that, click Settings, go down to Controller Configuration, and from here you'll see a menu that looks like this. By default, all of this is set to auto, and if you're okay with just testing things out like this, then you don't have to change anything. But I do recommend clicking on Manage Profiles here and setting up a specific profile for your controller. If you're playing on keyboard, click New Profile Keyboard, and if you're playing on a gamepad, click New Profile Gamepad, and this will bring up all of your configurations. From here, go on ahead and name your profile. So I'm just gonna call mine Sujano. Now the next step is to map each individual button. So you just click on the button you want to map and press the corresponding button on your controller. It's pretty simple and straightforward. But if you are having a little bit of trouble here, you can always bring up a picture of an N64 controller and then map your buttons accordingly. Once you've mapped everything the way you want, go on ahead and click Save and Close. Then go to Controller 1, go to Profile and select the profile you just saved. This will help make sure your controls are perfect. And if for some reason you're still having issues with your controls, Go to gamepad here and manually select your controller. For me, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, so I'm going to select it. Once that's all done, you're pretty much good to go. You can boot up a game if you want and have some fun. But if you want your game to look even better, we can go to the settings menu here, click on video settings, and change a few things. By default, there is no anti-aliasing. You can select FXAA or MSAA. It's just your personal preference here. For this video, I'll just put it on FXAA. 
You can also crank up the anisotropic filtering. So by default, it's off and I'm gonna crank this up to 16 times. I'm also going to switch it from bilinear filtering standard to the N64 style three point, again, to make sure my textures look good and crisp. On the right hand side of the menu, feel free to experiment around here, have some fun and find out what works for you. These menu options are pretty simple and straightforward. You can't really screw anything up. And if you do, just make sure to undo what you did. So you can enable VSync if you want you can enable threaded video if you want and you can even enable overscan you can also change the windowed resolution if you're looking to do that now on the emulation tab feel free to experiment around here and have some fun this is one of the best things about this emulator it's very simple and if you do something and mess something up it's also pretty simple just to readjust it and make sure it works again so for example if you wanted to crank the internal resolution you can you can crank this right up and see how it works for you. A good tip here too, if you are wondering what any of these menu options do, just hover over it with your mouse and it should pull up a pretty good explanation, including whether or not a certain setting is recommended. For example, this setting here is recommended checked unless performance is hurt. So I'm just gonna check it. Once you're done changing settings in here, make sure to click save and close. And now time to boot up your game. And to boot up the game, just click file and open ROM. From here, you can locate where your ROM is on your computer. And that's about it. Now everything is up and running and good to go. If you're having issues with performance, feel free to just lower some of the performance settings we just went over. They're completely optional, but they do make the games look pretty good. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on N64 emulation on PC in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.